Welcome back everyone to GGN. This is part three for this news report today, Tuesday, April 16th, 2013. I'm Darko. And I'm ready to go here. Think Chavez was paranoid. Venezuela's Maduro warns of U.S. funded biker gang. So this was supposed to be a big joke. Ha ha ha. April 11th, 2013. Interim president has spoken publicly about conspiracies ranging from murder plots to Salvadorian mercenaries. They serve as a political tool to unify the population and silence criticism. Is that what they are? No, just conspiracy theories, right? Seven killed, 61 injured in Venezuela protests. It says here, the Attorney General of Venezuela has announced that seven people have been killed and 61 injured during opposition protests over the presidential, presidential election result. It says here, prosecutors said the victims were humble members of the working class, giving suggestions that the opposition might be to blame for the deaths and injuries. Venezuela's Maduro accuses U.S. Embassy of supporting violent protests. So it says here that in the post-election crisis, as it's growing deeper, and seven people killed. President-elect has assured Venezuelans that he has proof that the U.S. Embassy is financing the ongoing protests. He said the Pentagon, the U.S. State Department, and the CIA govern the U.S. Here in Venezuela, the people govern. Caprillas, the opposition, has called Maduro's victory illegitimate. So it goes on here, says, but Latin American expert James Petra says the election was anything but fraudulent. In the case of Venezuela, there was 100 outside International observers cl clearly recognize as objective judges who observe the election process, observe the voting, and observe the counting. It is a misnomer to say that this was a questionable election. So, like this article said, they're putting forward a steady flow of conspiracy theories unmatched by any period in the Chavez era, who, you know, their, their, their leader is now dead, right? That's so why they're holding the elections. U.S.-backed El Salvadorian death squads in Venezuela to disrupt elections and assassinate Maduro. This is from April 11th, 2013. So, it goes on here, says, Relatives of Civil War victims in El Salvador have documented the criminal history of the Debusian family and their links with death squads during the 70s. So... So this here, a group of mercenaries has entered the country from Central America. They have three objectives. They are coordinating with right-wing groups from a Central American country, and they have coordinated with some of the sectors connected to the Venezuelan opposition candidate. It says these elements explain why I have conscripted mercenaries both in El Salvador as well as in other parts of Central America. And we have Syria's war to get dirtier than ever, says one former U.S. official has called it a cataract of weaponry. From small clandestine offices in countries like Qatar and Jordan, Turkey and Croatia, U.S. Central Intelligence Agency officers have acted as brokers and overseers of massive arms shipments programmed to serious opposition rebels. While the operation is shrouded in secrecy, the CIA declines to comment publicly on the arms supply. So they use a code of doublespeak, but exists, it definitely does, and according to arms trafficking investigators who are monitoring data on the supplies, the scale of shipments is huge. Syria, Britain funds rebels overseeing aid inside occupied areas, says Britain has stepped directly into the Syrian crisis, funding scores of civilian rebels to oversee hundreds of millions of pounds in aid of deliveries inside occupied areas. They have U.S. feeds Syrians, but secretly. So it goes on here, it says, so secretive is the operation that almost none of the Syrians who receive the help are aware of its American origins. A uh, concern for the safety of the recipients and delivery staff who could be targeted by government uh, it says here the Obama regime and their aid workers have chosen not to advertise their assi assistance. It says meanwhile the death toll mounts and they're basically they're and the globals aren't getting their uh, the regime change. Anger about the perceived failure of the U.S. to help mounts steadily among Syrians who support the rebellion, saying America has done nothing for us at all. So, but uh, you know, of course, it's interesting because. You know they're uh, they're kind of helping, they're kind of helping these uh, these jihadists. They're in there, these foreigners. They just bring them with them. And now, right now, that's uh, what we're going to get into. Is it's not about uh, bringing uh, Assad down, regime change, according to the Brookings Institute policy for regime change, and then go on to Syria. Now they have to contain these terrorists. They keep flooding in these terrorists to get regime change, and then when they get lose control, from now they got to fight the try to, uh, you know, stop it, right? The insurgency, like in Iraq, Afghanistan, whatever. So it says here that Jordan has agreed to spearhead a Saudi-led push to arm rebel groups throughout its borders in southern Syria in a move that coincides with a transfer from Riyadh to Amman of more than $1 billion. 
said it's a significant change for Jordan from a policy of trying to contain the spillover threat posed by the invasion of Syria across its border to one of actively aiming to end it before it engulfs the cash-strapped kingdom. A push to defeat al-Qaeda rather than an outright bid to oust Syria's leader is Jordan's driving force. This news coincides with my argument that Obama's policy in Syria long ago abandoned any effort to oust the Assad regime and is instead geared towards containing and undermining the rise of al-Qaeda militants among the rebel opposition. So yeah, when these people say, you know, uh, why, why won't you do, why won't you help us? America has done nothing for us. Well, the, the thing is, is they, uh, they want to see them go boots on the ground. Well, I, I can tell you, at least from what I've read, is that the White House has no intentions of having a military force on the ground. Uh, they may have uh, con small contingencies of clandestines and operatives, and maybe there's SIS from the UK, but for the most part, uh, they don't plan on doing that because they plan on using jihadists and foreign terrorists, um, mostly of Sunni, Wahhabists, and that uh, they want to use them. But they need to be able to contain them. They're getting out of control. So Syrian forces kill more militants and seize arms. So I guess uh, the reports that are coming out are that uh, that the Syrian government have uh, basically cleared out a lot of these terrorists and, and recaptured bases in the north of Syria. The Syrian army says it's killed more foreign-sponsored militants and seized their weapons during an operation across the countries. Across the country, sorry. It says in addition. The Syrian armed forces captured many machine guns, sniper rifles, rocket launchers, handmade rockets, mortar shells, and anti-tank missiles. So they've also seized four cars carrying caches of weapons in the northwestern government of Idlib. They dismantled five Turkish-made anti-armor mines, also capturing explosives. They inflicted heavy losses on armed groups near the shrine of this uh, Sieta, the south of the capital of Damascus. Iran says Syria to play a stronger role in the region after crisis ends. It says the resistance of the Syrian people and the government against pressures exerted by the world powers will protect the country against foreigners, says in the future. The lawmaker reaffirmed the uh, basically Iran support for Syria. He says here that uh, the Syrian government and the people will probably end the ongoing crisis in the country and will not allow uh, foreign conspiracies to undermine the independence and sovereignty of Syria. 36 Syrians are flown to Germany for medical help. The German foreign minister won't say if patients are civilians or fighters or terrorists, though opposition leader personally requested the medical care. It says three dozen seriously wounded Syrians were being flown to Germany for treatment in military hospitals. Yeah, that's usually where they send American troops when they medev medevac them out of the country, out of theater. Police official, Syrian man arrested in Greece with large consignment of telescopic sites. So a senior police official says a Syrian man has been arrested on Greece's northeastern border with Turkey. Hmm, Turkey, the distributor of, to, of these weapons, the terrorists, with a large batch of telescopic sites for rifles and shoulder fire rocket launchers. Syria's Assad reduces sentences for some rebels, says the president on Tuesday slashed prison terms by three quarters for an unspecified number of rebels convicted as terrorists as fierce battles raged around the airport. It's funny that, like in Western media, they quote it as terrorists and quote it, you know, uh, call them conspiracy theories. But over there, it's, it's, it's truth for them, right? So Syrian human rights front is EU-funded fraud. The New York Times admits fraudulent Syrian human rights group is UK-based one-man ban funded by EU and other European country. So the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights has long been exposed as an absurd propaganda front operated by Rami Abdul Rahman out of his house in England's countryside. But according to December 2011 Reuters article, it says here that this Rahman admits he is a member of the so-called Syrian opposition and seeks regime change of Assad. It says the UN uh, uses this compromised, absurdly overt source of propaganda as the basis for its various reports. And while Rahman refuses to identify that European country, it is beyond doubt that it is the UK itself. Upcoming Friends of Syria meeting, change of tactic or maintaining status quo, says the U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is expected to take part in the upcoming Friends of Syria donor meeting scheduled for April 20th in Istanbul. The so-called Groups of Friends of the Syrian People uh, last meeting was held in the Italian capital of Rome in February. 
Analysts believe the umbrella group of the Syrian opposition parties, also known as the Syrian National Coalition, is going to make fresh appeals in Turkey to the U.S. to supply them with more weapons. The Syrian Electronic Army hacks the NPR, group said to back Assad. So it says here several NPR sites and Twitter feeds were hacked last night. Visitors saw a message saying Syrian Electronic Army was here. It says here that uh, we will not say why we attacked at NPR. They know the reason, and that's enough. I covered this before briefly. Actually, I just mentioned it. We didn't go through the article, though. Somali Prime Minister, foreign fighters involved in court attack. The death toll rises to 35 in Sunday siege. It goes on here and it says uh, members of parliament are now putting the overall death at 35. The officials say the toll could rise further. So it was an unusually large attack from al-Shabaab, which claimed credit for the incident. But it says here, Prime Minister says several experienced foreign fighters were believed to have been involved said they were more sophisticated than normal al-Shabaab uh, explosive devices. Much like al-Nasra um, teaming up with al-Qaeda, it says here that it could be the al-Qaeda involvement, the first al-Qaeda involvement since the announcement merger with al-Shabaab. Israel's booming economy puts billions in U.S. aid under spotlight. Boosted by newly discovered natural resources, Israel is surging ahead economically. So it says here it's a surge that is pushing the issue of the country's $3 billion in annual aid from the U.S. onto the agenda. The boom may give a louder voice to calls for a reduction to the $3 billion worth of financial assistance Israel receives from the U.S. each year. An Erdogan in Turkey flow gas pipeline plan with Israel. <laughs> they like to play this crap off, this kind of fake feud between uh, Erdogan and, and Natianu, you know because there's a lot of Turkish people that don't like Erdogan, says that he's basically, uh, he's a lapdog for Israel too, so, but he has to maintain that hard line appearance. Says here, Turkey's energy minister says that a pipeline project between the two countries could have become possible maybe someday. Say they would like to open uh, a construction project of a pipeline to distribute Israel's newly discovered gas. Helmand uh, province poppy crop tripled since UK took over security. So the opium poppy production in Afghanistan, where British forces are stationed, has tripled compared to 2006 when the British first went there. Oh, I saw this article. This is just pretty eerie. Six strangled, one decapitated in Mexican resort of Cancun. Six people were found strangled to death and one decapitated in southern Mexico tourist resort in Cancun. So... It basically said it said it looks like the victims were independent drug dealers without any links to any specific cartel. So that's that's why it's scary. A Jewish crime lord behind 35 million pound cocaine haul sues prison chiefs for denying him kosher food. He's 68 and accuses prison service of institutionalized anti-Semitism. The cocaine smuggler is demanding 2,500 pounds and damages. Also claims that the prison has failed to provide Jewish books in the library. Cartel money laundering trial begins in Texas. Multi-million dollar horse racing and breeding operation run from an Oklahoma ranch was actually in front for the notorious Mexican drug cartel to launder millions of dollars in drug money. So this is pretty interesting because all those banks that were laundering money, what's going to happen to those guys? They're too big to fail and too big to jail, right? So... Um, but I, the connection I made about these these race horses was what they're trying if they are trying to launder money. Race horses are dropping dead in California. Seventeen confusing deaths since July. So I wonder how many horses are these are owned by the drug cartels or the mafia? Is that a sign? Are they hits on horses? I don't know because I was trying to find a reason for that. You know what's what's going on there with that? Uh, President Obama signs bill killing anti-corruption and pro-transparency stock act provisions. Purpose of the Stock Act, which stands for Stop Trading on Congressional Knowledge, is described by the Center of Politics. So it requires online posting of personal financial disclosure statements for lawmakers. So they say basically that they, they, they signed it and, uh, and then they kicked it back. And then yesterday, President Obama completed this rope a deception by signing a new bill, which stripped key provisions from the Stock Act and rolled back a lot of the progress that the original bill had made in promoting transparency and open government. And finish up here, FDA lets drugs approved on fraudulent research to stay on the market. It says it pulled none of the drugs in the market, even temporarily letting consumers take ibuprofen and other med meds and no longer 
knew for sure were safe and effective. Nuclear waste barrels remain strewn across the floor of the English Channel. Arkansas representative backs request to move the Exxon pipeline. They want to move it away from a watershed which provides drinking water for the hundreds of thousands of people. Thank you.